The Lord be with you. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. This morning as we look, we're in the fourth Sunday of Lent now, and our, uh, our Latin in the front of the bulletin, La Tere, means rejoice. In the midst of the, the struggle of Lent, maybe the, the, the muted nature of Lent, there is still rejoicing. There is still hope and promise. And as we gather today, we're going to look at the Old Testament. How many of you have a tendency to worry about tomorrow? Maybe not tomorrow, but about the things that might happen tomorrow or down the road. We all have a tendency to do that, even though we're here and we're receiving God's gifts. What happens? You're sleeping, God wakes you up, all of a sudden, what are you doing? Worrying about tomorrow. Well, Israel was no different. And we'll unpack that from the Old Testament reading today. What's our hope in the midst of our worry about tomorrow? It's the gifts he's given to us, right? Exactly. So as we gather today, Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184, we are singing in place of the Gloria in Excelsis. We're singing hymn 547 verse 4 this morning, and all of the rest of it will follow in the order of the service. With that, we begin this morning with our first hymn.
Our order of service this morning, Divine Service Setting 3, page 184, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the promise of your Savior given to you. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all of our needs of body and soul. Grant that we might heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all of your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this morning comes from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 21. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full? For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I, might, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat. And in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. And in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? They did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, each one of you, as much as you can eat. You shall each take an omer, according to the number of persons that each of you has in his tents. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it was melted. This is the word of the Lord. Please read along with me the catechetical review found in the center portion of your bulletin. What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? These words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins shows us that in the sacrament, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, There is also life and salvation. How can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? Certainly not just eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here. 
given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with bodily eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. The epistle reading for this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. So those who received this word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. as we continue with the reading of the Holy Gospel. This is the Holy Gospel from St. John, the sixth chapter. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing the large crowd that was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said said this to test them, for he knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not be enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, He distributed it to them, to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments that nothing might be lost. So they gathered them up. And twelve baskets full with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that they had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and to take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the gospel of our Lord. We make the bold confession of our Christian faith in the Apostles' Creed on page 192. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I would invite all of our children to please come forward.
Good morning. Great to see you all this morning. Thank you for coming up here. How many of you had breakfast this morning? What did you have for breakfast, Hannah? Cereal? Brooks, what did you have for breakfast? Well, that's very good. What did you have for breakfast? Yep, cereal for breakfast. You know what this is? Bread. It's bread. Now, this morning, as you listened in the Old Testament reading, the first reading and the last reading, we talked about bread. God's people were hungry, and what did he give them? Bread. He gave them bread to eat. It was called manna in the Old Testament. It was this thing that came down every day, and when they walked outside, they could go out and pick it up. Every single day, God gave them what they needed for that day. He gave them bread, and he gave them quail. Do you know what quail are? They're a little bird that flies, so they had meat and they had bread every day. Oh, we'll get to that. In the gospel reading, Jesus is there, and there's 5,000 people. Do you know how many that is? That's a really good thing. And that's only the men, right. There's 5,000 men, so there's probably close to 10,000 people. And when they were all there, they had five loaves of bread and two fish. You think that's enough to feed 5,000? I don't think so either. But yet Jesus gave thanks and gave it to the disciples. And he said, give it to the people. And they did, right? The disciples took it and they gave it to everybody. And everybody had as much as they wanted. And they were full. And they went back over when they were all done. And you know what they picked up? Twelve baskets, completely full of leftovers. They started with five fish, and they ended up with twelve baskets, and everybody ate. God gives us what we need for every day, doesn't he? Now, we pray that in a prayer called the Lord's Prayer. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, in the fourth part of the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Give us this day our daily bread. That's right. So we're asking God to give us what we need for today. So is this daily bread? Yes, Yes, it is. Is this daily bread? No. Do you need this? Do you need cheese? Will cheese keep you from getting hungry? Will it help your body grow? Yeah. So cheese is daily bread, isn't it? How about this? Is this daily bread? No. Oh, it's chocolate. It's got to be daily bread. Is it really good on ice cream? Yes, it is. Is that daily bread? Do we need that? Does it, does it fill our bellies? It's really good. And this is daily bread. You know what this is? It's medicine. Is medicine daily bread? It is. Because sometimes if you're really sick, do you need medicine to feel better? You do. And God gives us medicine and cheese, and chocolate, and bread, and all these things for our bodies. He gives us this for every day. But when we talk about daily bread, it's more than just things for the body. It's everything we need for today. So I want you guys to do this. Can you hold your breath? How long can you hold your breath? Yeah, that's about it. If we didn't have air... Would you survive? Could you survive without air? So is air part of daily bread? It is. See? Everything God gives us is for daily bread, and not only for the body, but for the soul. Do you know what I need every day? I I need some of these things every day, but I need that right there every day. Who's that on the cross? That's Jesus. And I need Jesus every single day because you know what Jesus tells me? He tells me he loves me. He tells me that I'm his. He tells me that he has died on the cross and risen again and has forgiven all my sins. He promises me that wherever I go, he's with me. And sometimes when I'm scared and I don't know what goes on, do you know what Jesus promises? I will be with you. You're never alone. See, God says he'll give us the stuff for our body. But he promises that daily bread is also Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. Well, shall we go to our Lord in prayer? Will you pray with me? Shall we just pray this great prayer that our Lord has given to us? And we'll ask the congregation to pray with us. All right, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for coming up here this morning. And we continue with our next hymn. In the name of Jesus, amen. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for all gifts of life and health and daily bread. We pray, dear Father, that your presence continue to be with us, trusting that you will give us what we need for each day. Bless us now in the preaching of your word, in Jesus' name, amen. It happens usually in August. Somewhere around the beginning of August, maybe even late July, I'll get a phone call from mom or dad. Their son or daughter is moving to Rapid City or Spearfish or someplace close by for college. They call me, they're looking for a church home, a good place for their kids. We talk about life at Divine Shepherd and there's usually another question that follows. It's really the more important question for them. Pastor, if they need something, can they call you? And I said, absolutely. You see, mom and dad have had these kids under their care for 18 years. 
And now they're moving out. And they're not at home. And they can't take care of every need. And they worry about what tomorrow means. And tomorrow brings. They worry about, is there somebody going to be there for them when their world falls apart? Is there going to be somebody there for them? So they're not alone. They call me and I assure them if they need anything at all, they can call. And we have a great family here who can help. And we'll be there with them. And you can almost hear them sigh on the phone, a sigh of relief. There's somebody there to take care of them. They won't be alone. They're protected. God's people, Israel, have seen some of the greatest miracles that God has done. They've seen that right in this short period of time. They've seen God and his promise come in and give these ten wonderful miracles. Now, uh, Egypt would not call them miracles. Egypt calls them plagues. But they've seen God in his mighty power do these great things. And in this last one, they saw the angel of death pass over every house that had the perfect lamb's blood on the door and the lamb inside. They saw the angel of death pass over. They saw the next morning as all of Israel gathered together and left slavery left their home of 400 years, walking out in the promises of God. They looked at the Red Sea. They looked behind them and saw the cloud where Pharaoh's army was bearing down on them. They saw God in a mighty pillar of fire come down behind Israel, part the Red Sea, And Israel walked through on dry ground. Water piled up on both sides. God's presence behind them in the pillar of fire stopping Egypt. And Israel walked through the sea on dry ground. They've seen the miracles. They've seen God keep his promise. They've seen that God loves them and how he's protected them. And now God promised he's going to lead them into the land that he's given to them. Israel has just seen all of these great things. They've been enslaved for 400 years. And now they're free. No more taskmasters. No more whips. No more people bearing down on them. They are free to be God's people and to worship God as he wants. What great blessings. What great miracles that they've seen. They're free. Now it's a month later, it's 30 days or so later, God has been leading them through the promised land and they come to this place and this is how Israel responds back to God. Would that we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and had bread to the full and you brought us out here into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. It's quite a different tune from the one that they just saw a month ago when God led them out with his mighty hand, when he led them through the water, when his presence was behind them protecting them. God's rescued people fell into the rearview mirror trap. You know, in your car, the rearview mirror is kind of ancient technology. Now now you have all screens that you can look into, and you can see what's going on behind you, and that's valuable. So you don't back over the kid's bike. So you don't back into a pole. The rearview mirror or the screen is valuable for us when we look back so that we know what's going on back there. But tell me, is the rearview mirror bigger, or is the windshield bigger? The windshield is. And for a very specific purpose. We are to look forward, and as we look forward, we have this grand view in front of us to see what's going on. God's people had fallen into the rearview mirror trap, looking backwards, thinking that God was back there, and they didn't see him up here. They didn't see God in front of them. All they saw and felt were hungry bellies and grumbling and fear and worry. They were grumbling against God because actually what they were doing is looking into the future and they were fearful. 
They were worried about what the future meant. They couldn't see into the future. They didn't know what was going to happen. And that scared them. And that came out as anger against Moses and against God. It'd be better, God, if you would let us die in Egypt with a whip. At least there our bellies were full. Really what they were saying is, God, where are you? We have needs of body and soul. Did you leave us now? We can't see you. Looking into the future is always challenging. It wasn't just for Israel, for us too. They had just left their home of 400 years with what they could carry. They'd been there a long time. And I would imagine, just like us, they'd accumulated a lot of stuff. And they left it. And they walked out with what they had, trusting that God would continue to provide for them. And he had showed them his mighty hand. He had showed them in the miracles. He had shown them how he would sustain them. They left. They were walking in the wilderness now, two million people. And their stomachs were grumbling, and so were they. Lord, where are you? Are you going to meet our needs for today? We have a picture of that in our world right now. Hundreds of thousands of people from the Ukraine are fleeing out of their country into Romania and Poland. And the group of people that they primarily see at the border are grandparents with a suitcase and their grandkids. And that's it. Leaving their homeland. Leaving everything they know and leaving for safety. Much like Israel. For many of us, when we look forward, it's scary. There are things that we don't have answers to. We look into the future of tomorrow and we wonder, God, are you going to be there? Are you going to keep your promises to me tomorrow like you have every day in the past? We look into the future and we don't think we have assurances because we can't see into the future. If we had assurances, we surely would feel better, wouldn't we? Not worry about what was going to happen tomorrow. It'd be easy for all of us to keep looking into the rearview mirror, keep looking back, to keep reminiscing about how good it was in the good old days and how terrible it is right now. But that's not what God wants for us. He wants us to live joyfully today. Not reminiscing about how good it was once upon a time. Living joyfully in his promises today and confidently looking into tomorrow and saying, I will go tomorrow and God will be with me. Because he's promised that for you. He's promised to be with you always. Not just in the past, not just today, but as you go forward into the future. He wants us to trust in his promises in the uncertainty of tomorrow as well. In the uncertainty of tomorrow, God was testing Israel's faith. Would they trust past what their eyes could see? Would they trust when their bellies were grumbling? Would they trust God and pick up only enough manna for one day, as God had said? God showed his faithfulness. For 40 years, God provided for them manna and quail. For 40 years, their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their feet didn't swell. For 40 years, God continued every day to show them his faithfulness by providing for them their daily bread. We pray in that fourth petition in the Lord's Prayer, give us This day, our daily bread. Just like Israel, they saw it every day. We pray, give us this day our daily bread. And what we're praying for is faith that trusts that God is going to keep his promises to me just like he has in the past. Even in my uncertainty of tomorrow. We pray, dear Father, this day give me strength to trust in you that will take care, that you will take care of my college student that's now hundreds of miles away. We pray, dear Father, give me this day faith to trust you past what my eyes can see. We pray, Father, give me this day strength to trust you in spite of my grumbling. And I don't think I'm the only one that does that. 
We all grumble about what we can't know and don't know in the future. The daily bread we pray for in the Lord's Prayer is far more than just meat and potatoes. It's everything we need to support this body and life. Give us this day our daily bread is remembering that God is the Alpha and the Omega right there on the posts as we enter the altar area, the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. He was in the beginning and is today and is in tomorrow. When we look to tomorrow, we are worried because we think that God isn't there and he's already there with his promises for you as we look into that. In the uncertainty tomorrow, God is there with those promises. You don't go into the uncertainty of tomorrow alone. The Holy Spirit leads you in like a shepherd leads his sheep. In the uncertainty of tomorrow, the reality of your baptism and the promises that God made to you are certain. Nothing is going to happen tomorrow that will undo the promises that God made to you in the water and the word. You're connected to Jesus. All your sins are forgiven. And his promise to you is that he now resides in you. His Holy Spirit in you. Because he has made you holy. He has washed your sins away by connecting you to the cross. He has placed his name upon you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And wherever God's name is, God is. When you and I face the future and we look into the uncertainty of tomorrow, God is with you. He doesn't leave you standing at the cusp of all your worries and say, well, let's see how you do. He is there leading us. He is there with us. He is strengthening you and promising you as you go into the unknown, it's only unknown to you. He knows what will happen. And nothing that will happen tomorrow is greater or can undo the promises that Christ has already done for you. The Holy Spirit has made your body his temple. Just like God was behind Israel in the pillar of fire as they passed through the waters of the Red Sea, now God resides here, here in you, in your forgiveness, in his Holy Spirit that he promised to be with you. Even if accident or disease should take your life tomorrow, it cannot undo the resurrection of Christ where he promised that as certainly as he rose, so also will you. Every uncertainty that we have of tomorrow has been overcome by the cross of Christ, by the power of God keeping his promises, that he has risen from the dead and because he has, you will also. When we pray in the Lord's Prayer in the fourth petition, give us this daily bread, it has its center right here in the cross of Christ, in the forgiveness of sins for you. For Israel, it was the real blood of a perfect lamb on the door, and the perfect lamb roasted over the fire for them to eat that night, and the angel of death passed over them. For us, it's the bread of life. As we gather right here at the rail today, Jesus, risen from the dead, here in, with, and under the bread and wine. Not a symbol, not a future promise, but Jesus that rose from the dead is here in this bread and in this wine for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, for the strengthening of your faith, so that when you look into tomorrow, you know Jesus is there, and you have no fear. That we enter tomorrow with all of the uncertainty, knowing that Christ is risen, and that he will walk with you as you go in. He leads you as a shepherd leads his flock. His promises are for you. What have we to fear? God is there, leading us into the promises tomorrow, so that we may continue to look forward in the joy and the hope of our risen Savior who has claimed you, who has forgiven you, and has promised to be with you always. In the name of Jesus, amen.
And now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the offertory on page 192. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Please be seated as we receive the offering. Please stand as we come to our Savior in prayer. Almighty God, your people of old grumbled against your goodness and were not satisfied by the gifts, nor did they heed your commands. Give us ears and our hearts to trust your word. Make us content with what you provide. And give us cheerful hearts to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy... Lord of the church, strengthen and preserve your people as we devote ourselves to your word and promises. We pray, Father, that you would bless those that lead us, Matthew and Scott and John, Randy and Dennis. Continue to bless the missions of Trinity and Belfouche and Evergreen at Pine Ridge. Lord, we pray for your guidance and wisdom as we seek direction for starting a mission congregation in the valley and a Lutheran elementary school at Divine Shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, restore to all Christian hearts the joy of your salvation by the blood of Christ, and make us eager to hear the voice of the gospel in the forgiveness of sins. 
So in turn, lead every Christian household, husband, wives, and children to speak the truth with our neighbors and to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord in Christ, you are reconciling the world to yourself. Watch over our nation and all whom you have placed in authority. Give them wisdom and prudence that your people might live in peace and, free, and freely make known the message of reconciliation. For the brothers and sisters of the churches in the Ukraine and Russia, we pray that, that God would keep their hearts from hating one another, that he might show them ways to serve in peace and proclaim the word of God and celebrate the sacraments. We ask, Father, that you would bring a quick end to this war. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Father, that you would be with those who are struggling, especially David and Melissa who mourn the loss. We pray, Father, that you would be with those who are recovering. Especially we ask that you would be with Rob and Julie, Loretta and Bob, Marlis, Clarence, Lenny, Dale, Mike, Kendra, Linda, Eric, Emily, and Wallace. Uphold Leanna, Nancy, Sharon, Norma, Betty, Lillian, and Colleen. Be with Erica and Vonda, Roxana and Colleen, and all with concerns. Grant healing and peace that they might continue to serve you with joy in this life and finally come to that good land that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you provide food from heaven for Israel during their days of wandering in the wilderness. So give us also that true food from heaven, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we might be sustained in our faith and in hope during the days of pilgrimage throughout this wilderness of this world. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, forgive our sins and free us from our slavery to the law, that like Jesus Christ, we may gladly fulfill your commands as free sons and daughters. Lord, in your mercy. Father, hear our prayer for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do as often as ye eat it, in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
Please stand as we sing the Nook on page 199. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
Please be seated. Good morning. Great to see you all this morning. Thanks for joining us. Dana, where are you? Come tell us about last night. You thought your duties were over when we were done last night. daycare that's downstairs with our preschool and a majority of that money will actually go towards refurbishing our playground outside expanding it out so the kids have more room to run part of our licensing with the uh, early childhood center says that we have to have an enclosed playground so while we all play out there all the time our legal play area is the fenced area out there which is quite small for four kids so we're going to make it a little bit bigger so they have a little bit more room to run around didn't come thank you for your continued support of our mission downstairs well done <laughs> thanks dana a couple of things coming up uh the announcements in your bulletin we are putting easter eggs together on the 16th 9 to noon in the fellowship hall uh, we're decorating, ki- uh, decorating eggs for Easter Sunday morning. So if you'd like to come and dye eggs and hang around with us, keep that in mind. Uh, this coming Wednesday night, if you'd like to pack Easter eggs, we have an Easter egg hunt coming up the Saturday before Palm Sunday. The Saturday before Palm Sunday. So this Wednesday night, we're going to put all the chocolate in the eggs. And you know, chocolate is a food group. So if you'd like to come and join us, I won't judge anybody if there's empty wrappers where you're sitting. (laughs) Wednesday night, join us for that. Vacation Bible School's coming up, and why do we do these things? Tell kids about Jesus. So all of that's in your announcements here. Bible study in the back this morning is going to be a little different. We borrowed some round tables for last night just to see how we can mess with you a little bit. We'll have round tables back there today. But we're uh, continuing this morning our walk through the catechism again in the second part of baptism. So come and join us for that in the back. Any other announcements? Please. Very good. Any others? Go in his peace.